Hello Year 3, um, welcome to our second math, uh, second English lesson of the week even. Um, so today we are going to be practicing some skill stuff and we will be linking it to our um, text uh, towards the end of the lesson. So we are starting off today by looking at inverted commas. Now we've done lots and lots of work on this um, since September. Um, so what we're talking about this is um, speech, so direct speech. So when you're having a conversation between two or more characters, um, we would need to use this piece of punctuation to show that. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of, um, of a refresher to remind ourselves of what um, punctuation we need when we are writing direct speech, and then we're going to have a go at doing some. Okay, let's get going. So, um, inverted commas. So, there are two places where inverted commas are needed when writing direct speech. So, in the sentence, what's the matter, Dina? said Sid. So, Sid the words that he says are, what's the matter, Dina? That's what would come out of his mouth if he was having a conversation. So we use our inverted commas to go around that, what is spoken, the spoken words. So we would open uh, the speech with an inverted comma, which looks like a 66. So as you can see up on that the example here, you've got what looks like a, two little sixes, but the bottom bit is coloured in. Um, and that goes before the first spoken word. I would then use a piece of punctuation to end my speech. And then after that punctuation, I would put in my uh, inverted comma to close my speech, which is the opposite way around. So it looks a little bit like a little 99, but again, colored in. And that goes after the last word that is spoken. Okay, so imagine that inverted commas are like hands, they hold within them only the words which are being spoken. So only the words that someone would say. Now I wouldn't say said Sid, I wouldn't finish a sentence by saying that I'm saying it, um, it's just for when we are writing, so we know who is talking. Okay. So there are two places um, where other forms of punctuation are needed when writing direct speech. So in addition to those two inverted commas around the speech, we also need to have a piece of punctuation before the closing um, inverted comma. Um, so either a comma, a question mark, explanation mark, or a full stop, possibly. Um, so in this one, we've got, he's asking a question, therefore we need a question mark. And you also need a full stop after your reporting clause. So again, that reporting clause is the bit that tells us who is speaking, okay? So other examples of how the punctuation could um, be written would be how exciting it is with an exclamation mark. If she's exclaiming it, so she's shouting it. Or I don't know what to do with a comma. Um, and then just said. So the reporting clauses, so we've said this a few times last um, we've been looking at this. So the reporting clause is this bit in blue here. It tells me who is speaking and how they're saying it generally. Um, so after that speech, um, covered before, um, but we need to have a reporting clause linked to the speech sentence so that we know who's saying it and how they're saying it. So um, said is quite a basic one. Um, it's not the most interesting, so generally we try and do our best to use a different word instead of said, instead, instead of said even. So, what's the matter, Dina? Asked Sid would be a good one because he's asking a question, hence the question mark. What's the matter, Dina? Whispered Sid. So, whispered and uttered would mean that he's talking quite quietly, so um, she could be upset possibly, so he's trying to speak to her in a really calm voice. Or shouted, so he could be being quite cool if he's shouting, what's the matter, Dina? And it's not, he's not being very nice to her. Or it could just be that he's far away from her, um, so he's shouting to get her attention. So each of them would be um, give us a little bit more meaning to the sentence that's being said, depending on that reporting clause. So it's your turn now to have a little go. So here you've got the start of a conversation. Um, so you've got Amina, who is asking her son, Sunil, to come and help with an email. So she says, Sunil, can you come and help me send an email? So think, where would your inverted commas go? And what would your reporting clause be? Could you think of what Sunil might say back to his mum? You could write a response as well. So on a piece of paper, can you write down um, the full direct speech using your inverted comma, the punctuation to end it, and your reporting clause, please? Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one now. So. In, um, again, your turn. So we've got Mr. Miller and we've got Max. So Mr. Miller says, please, could you take those to Jessica's classroom? And Max says, no problem, sir. So um, here again, your first job is you'll need to write Mr. Miller's sentence using the appropriate speech punctuation. So inverted commas, um, 
and uh, inverted commas ending with punctuation and your reporting clause. But then, because you've got two people talking, you need to miss a line to drop onto the next line before you write Max's response. They can't sit on the same line because it's a new speaker needs to go on a new line. So Max's response would go underneath Mr. Miller's. So no problem, sir. And then how would Max say that? And finally, um, we've got three people this time. So you've got Lisa saying, what are your plans for tonight? Janine saying, I don't really have any. And Alex saying, do you fancy going out for a meal? So can you apply the same thing? So firstly, inverted commas, put punctuation, reporting clause, then make sure the new speaker goes on a new line. So you'll have Lisa's um, speech, then you have Janine's speech underneath, and then Alex's underneath that. So you should have three separate lines of speech for these people. Okay, so here's some example answers you might have had. So Sunil, can you come and help me send an email? So we've got the inverted commas here and here. We've got a question mark, she's asking a question and she's shouting because he might be downstairs or she might be getting fed up or something. Um, for this one, we have the uh, inverted commas before please and after our question mark. Um, and then we've got no problems there with, again, inverted commas and replied and asked there. And again, if you notice, he's dropped down onto this line. Normally we could have kept writing up here, but no, because new speaker, we've dropped down here. Again, here we've got inverted commas around all the different bits that are being spoken. Again, Janine started talking, so we've dropped down and started on a new line. And same for Alex. Okay. Now your reporting verbs might be different. You might have used a different word instead of asked or replied or said. Um, but don't worry about that. The main bit you must have the same is the inverted commas in the right place. Okay, so your task now is to give me a few different pictures of some frogs. Um, and I would like you to write um, a speech sentence for one or both of those frogs. So you could choose a frog and write a sentence about what he's saying, or you could write one about both of them, have a conversation. But remember, if you're doing that, you need to go in two separate lines, new speaker, new line. So what could you write about this picture? Okay, and the next one. So here we've got, um, they've both got some bags, suitcases, so it looks like they might be going on a holiday possibly. So what could they be talking about in this picture? Okay, so here you've got some sentences that have been punctuated incorrectly. So what I'd like you to do is write out these sentences and put the correct punctuation where they need to go. So remember, inverted commas, punctuation before your second inverted comma, a reporting clause and a bit of punctuation after your reporting clause. So pause here and then we'll look at the answer. Okay, let's go on to the answer then. So there you go. So check yours is the same as this. Okay, let's move on. So speedy speech, so nice and quick this time, so don't get too hung up, it doesn't have to be masses of writing, so nice and speedy speech. So you've got two little boys here sat on laptops outside, so what could they be talking about? So write a, a line of speech for each of them. So again, remember to try and include all those different things that we've just been going through, all those different bits of punctuation, because it's really important that we get that right now. Okay, the next one then, so what would this gentleman be saying to this statue, and what might the statue say back? Again, nice and quick. First thing that comes to your head, what might they say? Okay, and now we've got two parrots. So what might the parrots be saying to one another? Okay, then right. Your final question um, is linked to our story. So what I'd like you to do um, is using all the skills that we've just practiced, if you need to go back and remind yourself and have a little bit of a check and a practice again, please do. Um, but I would like you to have a got writing a conversation between uh, some of the characters from our book. So you've got a few people there who you might choose to write about. Um, you could do Dad and Professor Stegg or the aliens or the boy and girl, the brother and sister and the pirate queen and her crew or the Mayan people who tried to sacrifice uh, Dad and Professor Stegg, but they were convinced not to. Loads of different people that you could write about. There's more that I've missed off from the book as well, um, but these are the ones that I'm focusing on. 
So choose two people that you want to have a conversation with and then have a go at writing just a little short conversation, maybe two or three lines of speech each for each character, um, making sure you do all the correct punctuation uh, and that when uh, when each of them speak, a new speaker goes on a new line. So if I started with dad, I have dad's sentence, then I do Professor Stegg's sentence, then I do dad's. I wouldn't just write them so they all followed on. So make sure that you drop them down a line. Okay, then. so that's your English task for today. Um, I look forward to seeing some examples of what you get up to. Um, I hope you are all safe and well, and I will see you next week for the next part of our story.